I want to welcome you to the Connect Show today. Uh, it is, uh, the show is called All Things Recovery. It's hosted by IRCO, Iowa Recovery Rescue Community Organization. And also, we have a project called Liberty Recovery Community located in Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, it's a unique hybrid project. It is recovery housing. We have 24 beautiful apartments. Um, and then we have free mental health and substance abuse uh, substance use disorder programming um, and it's very very affordable so if you know anyone a loved one a, a sibling that needs help in that uh, arena please give me a call at 563-599-2980 and i'm happy to say that we're doing part two with johnny mm -hmm. randall and johnny has a ministry too called walk by faith ministries he's on facebook and at the end of the program uh, he'll talk a little bit about that so you know how to connect with him but I'm excited today because we already did part one. We talked about his childhood, his life. Uh, Johnny was a drug dealer. Uh, he's got quite a perspective. He was in prison. Um, God did miraculous things through his life. And so he's got some wisdom. And Praise we God. want you to hear about it today uh, because I believe there's people out there just like you that have somebody that you would like to see receive help or you yourself, maybe you seem hopeless Maybe you've even contemplated suicide. Don't do that. No. Don't do that. No. Just, you know what? Trust God uh, and pay attention here today. Uh, I believe that God will breathe hope on you today. Uh, so listen in, but we're going to start out uh, with a question that some folks like to blame others and some people like to blame and shame themselves into isolation. Mm -hmm. And how can we avoid this common trap? Johnny? Yes, praise God. But well, see what it is, the enemy used those same things against Adam when they sinned. Mm -hmm. Adam blamed Eve, Eve blamed the serpent. But see, really, don't do the blame game. Yeah. Own up for what you did. Hey, look, Lord, I missed it. I've sinned. Okay? You see, when you confess up that you missed it, like in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if you confess your sins, he faithfully just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You see, there's no forgiving of a sin when you're playing the blame game. Matter of fact, you've got to forgive to be forgiven. In the book of, Matt, book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 25, it said, when you stand praying, if you have ought against any, forgive that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. You've got to forgive to be forgiven, people. That's and the first thing you need to do is confess your sins. And then if God forgive you, then you've got to forgive yourself. Don't keep rehearsing all the mistakes you've ever done wrong. You see, the reason I share my past is because I've got victory over those things. Victory right. over drugs, alcohol, victory over all those things I was involved in. But see, the victory I have is because I got it by doing what God told me to do. Mm -hmm. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Yep. Who is it that overcome the world? He that believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's your victory right there. It I don't is. know where you are. If you want to get out of this situation, the first thing you need to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You say, well, Brother Randall, you don't know what I did. It don't make no difference. Well, you don't know what I've done. It makes no difference. Jesus came for the sinner. He came for the lost. You see, what Jesus did, he took my sin and he paid the price. He took the sin and gave me righteousness. He took the wrong and gave me the right. He took the darkness and gave me the light. It was a great exchange took place. He went to hell, so I didn't have to go to hell. Amen. See? And right now, I don't know where you are, but if you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, I can't do it on my own. Come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. And you accept him as your Lord and Savior, right now you're in the kingdom of God just by asking him. 1 John, I mean, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, the Bible said, you shall be saved. And guess what? That's how simple it is, people. God has already did all the hard work by sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins and your sin. Now it's time for you to get, come clean. Dump all the stuff. Come clean with God. The drugs, the alcohol, the adultery, the fornication. Maybe your lady who had abortion. It don't make a difference, people. My grace in God is so awesome because I know this. What God did for me, he can do for anybody, people. That's right. God wants you to come to him and to come clean and let him know that you can't do it. And guess what? Once you do that, now you start saying what God says about you. See, that's what makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. See, when you start saying what God says about you, 
He says, you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're a new creature in Christ. You're more than a conqueror in Christ. You're the redeemed of the Lord in Christ. You see, everything I am today is based on what God did for me. And I started having to say what God says about me. You are today because you've been saying what the world said. They're telling you it's hopeless. You're never going to get off those drugs. You're never going to be worth anything. You've done this. You've done that. And the devil rubs that in your face. And that's where you listen to the lies of the devil. But see, look at here. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 25, this is God talking. He said, I, even I, am he who blotted out your transgression for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins, your iniquity. God said, I'm not going to remember your past. I'm not going to remember everything you've done wrong. What I'm going to do, I'm going to place you in Christ, and I'm going to see you in Christ. Do you notice how God sees me? That's how God sees Michelle. That's how God sees all of us. He sees me in Christ. That's right. People, I'm here to tell you it's life changing. What do you think, Johnny, is the impediments uh, to deliverance? I have talked to a lot, I deal a lot with folks in jail and prison. Um, I know several, a bunch of them, that when they finally got to a prison cell, there was no way out. They hit rock bottom. Yeah. And for some to really do intervention strategy when it comes to substance use disorders, it takes hitting rock bottom. Yes. You know, so what do you think are some of the impediments to deliverance? And what do you think it takes for God to get our attention and rescue us and unlock the doors of our prison? Well, God's getting your attention. If you're watching this program, this is God today. Amen. Getting your attention. Mm -hmm. We're not here for no other reason but for you. That's why we're here. You see, when Michelle gave me a call to come do this, God knows this is what you need to hear. See, some of you need to see somebody who's been there and done that. You see, if I was here right now and I told you I've never been to prison, never smoked a joint, never did cocaine, never did those things, well, some of you can't relate because, that, you know, you've never done that. But I'm here to tell you I've done it all and God set me free. I'm talking about maybe, I don't know, 30 years since I've even had a beer. I'm not knocking nobody for what they do, but I'm just telling you, God took the, you know, I told God, I said, God, if there's anything in my life that's not pleasing to you, take it away. Mm -hmm. There was no struggle. There was no, none of that stuff. It's just like somebody flipped the light on mm -hmm. and it's gone. You see people, to drive out the darkness, it's not hard. All you gotta do is cut the light on. You cut the light on, the darkness is gone. And Jesus is the light. In John chapter eight, verse 12, he said, I'm the light of the world. He that believes in me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's all it takes, people. You know, when it comes to substance use disorder, there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion and there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of disorder. And it's just interesting in mental health today, starting in like 1970, something like that, they started talking about uh, depressive disorders. Mm -hmm. Everything started to become a disorder, which is confusion and whatever. And then it began to talk about mental health and what exactly that is, that mm -hmm. if you're discouraged, and there were, there were three things, which really waylays people most of the time in our lives. But the way to get out of disorder is to get in alignment with God. That's right. Okay? Yes. Uh, the first thing that God reached for was a lost soul called planet Earth. Amen. And if you see that the Earth was without form and it was void, okay, you'll find if you study those words, they were that was out of just it was in disorder. It had confusion. It had many deficits. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says the scriptures say, "I am complete in Him." Yes. Which is ahead of all principality and power. You know, when you look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of of your faith, um, and like David said. I look, I look to the hills from whence cometh my help. Amen. I, I look to God. I want to look to myself. That's right. Because I'm not going to find answers within myself, but you will find them in God. Amen. If you look to God. Another thing Jesus said is repent or perish. That's right. What is turn or burn. What, well, that's a good one. So what do we do? What do I do to repent? It's really confessing the things that you did wrong. Amen. It's a change of mind that leads to a change of action. It's like uh, I've heard so many times, one thing the devil can't whoop is a made up mind. That's right. If you make up your mind that, hey, I don't want this, seek out help. Amen. You know, go to a detox center, go to treatment, mm -hmm. find recovery or sober or recovery housing, find it. 
and go after God That's right. and pour yourself into God. And I know so many people I've mentored over the years. It's unbelievable. Um, they call themselves delivered drug addicts. Not, um, what can I say? Yeah. Not yeah. once an addict, always. An addict. No, these are delivered addicts to where right. you'd look at them, you'd never know in a thousand years that they ever had a problem. Right. Because God got involved in their lives. Yeah. You know, Jesus is the answer for the yeah. world today. Yeah. Um, that may seem like a cliche to the world, uh, but if you ever taste of his presence, if you ever really get in the presence of God, I've seen a lot of people weep in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. um, they've never felt anything like it. He becomes real, real in a big hurry yes, when Amen. you're under the power and the presence of God. Yes. God's an incredible God and he wants to rescue to you today from your disorder. Amen. He wants to bring clarity to your life and understanding. And uh, that's the type of thing that uh, Jesus Christ can do in your life. Amen. But, you know, avoiding the pitfalls of substance uh, use disorders and the carnage it creates, there's so many reasons why uh, people are caught up in it. Uh, some of the most intelligent people uh, have substance use disorders mm -hmm. because they're people that like to be challenged. Right. And so they get into drugs and alcohol and for a challenge, the bigger the better. Yeah. So they go through drugs and, the, and they climb the ladder on the very worst, just thinking that, you know, um, I can get this thrill. Mm -hmm. I can get this challenge. I can beat it. There's people that have died thinking they can beat it. That's right. Thinking they can, they can beat this big bad boy drug. No. And, and they end up dying from it. They end up dying. So, you know, comparing the days when you were a drug dealer, Johnny, and now, where do you think our world has gone wrong? The world right now mm -hmm. have turned their back on the truth. Yeah. They're looking at the world. They're imitating the world. You see, if you want to change your life, it's very simple, change the way you think. You see, if you never think about drugs, alcohol, don't think about that stuff, you can't go back there. The only reason they keep repeating what they're doing because they're thinking about it. And the devil makes sure he's bombarding your mind with those thoughts and things. You see, like in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, for the pulling down a stronghold, casting down those thoughts and imagination, imagination and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God. They're thinking about it, and if you think about it long enough, people, you'll, do you'll go back and do it. And that's what the enemy done. He is bombarding the world right now with thoughts and imagination of all this stuff, and that's why they keep repeating and going back. You see, people, if you change the way you think, it changes everything. You say, well, how do you do that? You're going to have to open your mouth and start saying what God says about you. You see, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You got to start confessing, I have the mind of Christ. I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ. I'm the redeemed of the Lord in Christ. You see, when I start saying what God says about mm -hmm. me, your life turns and it goes that way. The Confidence. only reason you don't see the change because people are saying what the world said. Well, everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it. No, not everybody's doing it. That's not right. everybody. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Yeah, but it's, it's finding confidence in God. Yeah, right. Not in ourselves. The way to overcome chaos is have a confident mind. That's right. right. And put, I, go ahead. Your, you go ahead. Isaiah 26, 3, I'll give you perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And Proverbs That's chapter good. 23, verse 7, as a man think it, so is he. See, if you keep thinking you'll never get off the drugs, never get off the alcohol, you're on that little gerbil wheel and you go around and around and around. You see, people, all you got to do is start thinking, believing, and confessing what God says about me. And when you do that, the world will call you a nut. See, when I got out of TDC, the first thing they said, well, he's got jailhouse religion. You know, mm -hmm. oh, give it a year or two, he'll be back. But see, after five years, I didn't go back. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I ain't been back. So now they're starting to listen to what I say. Mm -hmm. Because they see right now, something mm -hmm. took place. See, what took place is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me. See, people, when God gets so big on the inside, you're able to go through things. Like it says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you're able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Did you know, people, God has given you power, me power, Michelle power? 
Listen, he's given us power. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I've given you power to tread over snakes and scarfing over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by no means shall harm you. What is that power? That power is in the name of Jesus. You want to get set free? Here we go. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of alcohol, drugs, cocaine, marijuana, pornography. I break that power over your life right now. You see, in the book of Luke, Matthew, the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Those foul spirits are whispering in your ear, telling you all those things. I got authority over those foul spirits. People, let me tell you something. The devil ain't big and the devil ain't bad. Oh, he is a liar. He wants you to believe his lie. People, I'm here to tell you, the devil can't do nothing but try to talk you in to doing another hit. And you know how you can stop and say, no, in the name of Jesus, I will not allow that. I will not tolerate that. People, you spend time talking to everything else, start talking to those things. Talk to the alcohol. Tell alcohol, no, no marijuana, no cigarettes, no, in the name of Jesus, I will not tolerate that. If you do that in the name of Jesus, people, James 4, 7, submit to the Lord, resist the devil, he'll flee every time. If that didn't work, I wouldn't be sitting here. That's I'm right. living a life of victory. That's right. And everybody can have this victory. You see, I've come down here where you are so you can come up here where I am. I want to point you to Jesus because what he did for me, he'll do for you. All That's you right. got to do is do what I did. Get in that word. Meditate that word. Believe that word. Confess that word. And you start saying what God says about you. And that's the victory right there, people, in the name of Jesus. Where do you think the world has gotten off course? The you know, world? You, you, when you look at, like I said, where you were 30 years ago. Yes. My life, I look at the progression of where our world is, has come from, mm -hmm. where it's heading. Right. Okay. Um, you know, the scriptures talk about the coming of the Son of Man being like in the days of Noah. Yes. You know, that they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving and marrying. Mm -hmm. Just a normal life all the way to the day of going up uh, into the ark. And it talks, the imagination of man's heart was continually wicked. Um, you know, it parallels today yeah. in every way. Uh, it even tells you in the scriptures what mankind will be like today. That's right. We're living, I believe, in some of the closing moments Amen. of time. Amen, I agree. You know, there are the winds. Uh, the winds of the last days are yes. blowing on this world and people don't know what to think. Bible talks about men's hearts failing them failing for fear them. of things to come. That's right. Uh, I think we're there. Yes, uh, And I, I agree. think people are, are just blown away at the changes that have come to our world just in the last 10 years. Exactly. Uh, and it's not headed in a good way. No. Now, yeah, you don't want to hear gloom and doom, I get it, but you also don't want to be an ostrich and stick your head in the sand. In the sand. Yeah. Yes. Our only hope, it's like the days of Noah. The hope was the ark. That's right. The ark of safety. That's right. And today the ark of safety is the church. That's right. Is getting involved with the things of God. That's right. That's where you're safe. The actual word salvation means safe. Yes. You know, soterra, soterra, uh, or even the word soho, Greek word, but um, we can be safe. We That's don't right. have to fear of don't things have to, to come. We don't have to be restless. We can have peace that passes even our thinking. That's right. Our understanding. Our understanding. That's but it. the only place that I find that, and maybe you're a superstar, the only way I find that is in God. That's if I don't have a prayer life, I'm not right. happy. That's right. If I don't, if I'm not close to Him, I'm not happy. Yes. You know, um, I don't know where people find their peace today. Um, mm. I don't find it unless it's in God. That's right. Just See, they're, saying. They're trying to find peace in a bag of cocaine. They're trying to find peace in that bottle. They're trying to find peace in the pleasures of this world, you see, but that's, it doesn't get it. It's a quick fix, but it doesn't it last. A, it is a quick see, fix. And like you said a while ago, the reason the world like it is right now, because think about it, out of all the nations on this planet, there's one nation under God. This, out of all the nations, there's one nation under God. That's the nation we're living in. Mm -hmm. And see, when that nation was found, there's one nation under God, but guess what? It's still that way now. But right now, God's got to shine in your life. If nobody served God, you got to make a decision. I'm going to serve God if nobody served God. I'm going with God if nobody That's going right. with God. That's right. One nation under God. And see, the reason the world like it is right now, because when you put the wrong people in office, 
and they're doing all that crazy stuff, then guess what? A nation's no stronger than the leaders you put up there. You put the wrong people in office, and they say it's okay to admit adultery and lie, cheat, and steal, and rob, then everybody on them do the same thing. Yeah. And that's the way that is. We need you got to put godly people in office. We need to pray for our country. We need There's to. There's ever a time that we need to pray for our nation. It's now. We now. Need, the Bible talks about praying for our leaders. Even that's if you right. don't think they're right, pray for them. That's right. That's what we need to that's do. That's right. We're not coming against them. We lift them up and we pray that's for right. them. You so know? can you come up, I, know, I got a pretty good idea what you're going to say, but can you come up with a solution to the societal problems connected with substance use disorders? The, the answer is putting Jesus back on the throne of your life. Yeah. Who sits on the throne of your life? You see, in the morning time or whenever, what's the first thing you grab for? Is it you going to God in prayer? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek ye first, not second. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God needs to be first. That's you know? right. If you put him first, you know, then the rest of your day is going to go awesome because you put him first. You got direction for that day. He said your steps are ordered by the Lord. See, your steps, your thoughts, everything you do, God should be first, people, and that's what you need to do. And see, right now, don't let the devil talk you out of things that are going on in your life. See, you may not be there yet. So the devil telling you, well, you know, you're not going to be able to do this and that. That's a lie from the pit of hell, people. That's a lie. I don't know where you are. You can be at the barrel. You can be on the bottom of the barrel. I don't care. Maybe you've been diagnosed with cancer. I don't care what the deal is. My God is greater than anything you're facing. And in the name of Jesus, you can be set free from all those different things. And all you got to do is say, help me, Jesus. That's the beginning right there. Johnny, where do you think you would be if it were not for Jesus Christ in your life? One or two places. Dead or jail? <laughs> dead or hell. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Dead or hell. One of the two. You know? It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. And you know, the same thing. I have no idea where I'd be. I, I had a pretty radical personality. Right. I have a pretty, co pretty radical personality. It's a good thing. Yeah that I found God in an early age. Amen. Um, doesn't mean we're perfect. No. Doesn't mean that we don't stumble. But I'll tell you what, I've learned if I stumble, that makes me go to God even more. That's right. Even more. Would you reject your child that messed up? Would you just say, well, now you go get in your bedroom. I don't want you in this family no more. I no. Don't. No, and especially if they're repenting and they That's feel bad. That's right. You're going to love them more. That's right. You know, and the, the key is, is living a repentant life. That's constantly right. Constantly striving to live a holy life yes and not saying i mean there's a lot of distractions in this world yeah there is and con and you constantly have to cut them out to pay attention to the things of god and what he was talking about when i think about prayer is i try to give god the first fruits of my day first mm -hmm. fruits means first thing in the morning first thing jesus said rise and pray yes. that you enter not into temptation. temptation okay if i give him the first fruits of my day I don't want to give them the last fruits of my day right. because it's going to be a now I lay me down to sleep prayer. <laughs> yeah. Truly, because I'm too tired. That's right. There's times I said, God, I'm sorry. I'm giving you the last fruits of my day That's today because right. I was too tired. Yeah. So there's, there's some good words here. There's power in prayer. There's power in seeking God. Yes. There's power in faith and believing that he loves you because yes. he loved you while you're yet a sinner. He loves you while you're yet a drug abuser. That's right. He loves you while, no matter what sin you're involved in, he loves you. That's right. And it's, it's just a, it's a phenomenal thing to think yes. that the God of heaven could love us that way. That's right. You know, so Johnny, what, um, what hope can you bring through the word of God to parents who are discouraged and dismayed? And I, I hear from so many parents that have yeah. a son or a daughter. Would you, what, wherever they are right now, this is what you need to do. You need to give them to God. You see, in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, casting all your cares over on the Lord because he cares for you. You can't change them. Matter of fact, they'll drive you crazy. You trying to do that. You're going to have to trust God. I know it may not be easy, but see, what you're doing is not working right now. Like I told Michelle, I've got five girls, and I don't worry and fret about none of them. 
because God can go where I can't go. He mm -hmm. can be where I can't be and he can do what I can't do. So you know what I'm doing? I hit my knees and I call out their name and I said, Father God, them are your girls and you take care of them. You watch over them. And then I stand on John chapter 10, verse 29. My father is greater than all and nobody can snatch anything out the hand of my God. Woo! Did y'all hear me? <laughs> there ain't a demon, a devil. There ain't no alcohol and drugs. There is nothing that can snatch them out the hand of God. And I trust God that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him. People, when you learn to trust God, that's the key. And you learn to trust God this way. Spend time with him. The more time you spend with him, the more you can trust him. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Now, this is the confidence that I have in him. It says we. That we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And because we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petition or request in which we ask. I ask God, I go to God, and I'm trust and believe that God's got it taken care of, people. And that's the victory right there, is knowing you can trust God. Did you know this? Numbers 23, verse 19. I said Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, or the son of man that he needs to repent. Has he said it and will he not do it? Has he spoken it and will he not bring it to pass? See, that's what I'm talking about. Look at 1 Timothy chapter, not 1 Timothy, Titus chapter 1, verse 2. God can't lie. Hebrews chapter 6, verse, verse 19. It says it's impossible for God to lie. You that's can right. trust God. Amen. You know, Johnny, I want you to look into the camera there and I want directly and speak to the people out there uh, that have seemingly lost hope that there's ever a way out. Yes. And I want you then at the end of that, I want you to tell them about your ministry. Praise God. Okay. Or maybe say a prayer over them. Amen. I know you want to get set free. And if you want to get set free, put your hands on my hands while you're looking at this screen and say, Father, I've heard a lot of words today and I heard what Michelle and Johnny Randall said. I want to be set free from these drugs. I want to get set free from these alcohol. And I'm calling on you right now, Father God, as I place my hands on these hands on the screen, that I will be set free and delivered from the drugs, from the alcohol, from the addictions, and from the habits. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, those who place their hands on the screen, be set free, healed, and made whole in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it, Lord God. Amen. You see, people, I serve a God that has no limitation. I serve a God who can do a seatly, abundantly, above all that I can ask, think, or pray. This is why I am like I am, because my confidence in my God who has no limitation. Amen.